Do you want to learn about recessive genes? Of course you do, otherwise you probably wouldn't have clicked this video or just want to be entertained. And now you're going to learn about recessive genes anyways. <laughs> I'm going to explain all the different types of pairings that you can have and the percentages that you see when you're buying snakes and you're like, huh, oh, what's that? Hit something, hit this percentage after this video, you will understand. And in return for giving you such valuable information, why don't you like the video, put a nice comment, or a mean one if that tickles your fancy because you're a terrible person, or subscribe. Or just do all of them. Okay, let's go. We're going to use the example of albino. But anneries work the same way, so do square tails and anything that's recessive. So the albinos are going to be orange, the normals are going to be brown. And we're just doing an albino to a normal, and this way it's easy to understand. There are two forms of the recessive gene, uh, any recessive gene. There is the heterozygous. So we're going to call it the het z, and there is the homozygous. Homo z. The homo z, just think two of the same. Homo, two of the same. So the albinos that are, are homozygous, they're carrying two of the same albino genes. That's the only way to get a visual albino. You need two albino genes. Now for the heterozygous, there is one albino gene, so if a normal is het for albino, it's still going to look normal because it's only carrying one gene. So the het is missing, the homo has two. Het, missing one, homo, two of the same. Okay? So this is an albino, and we're breeding it to a normal. So we breed the albino to the normal. Now what's going to end up happening here is we're going to have let's say eight babies, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. They're all going to be normal, but they're all going to be het z for albino. So anytime that you have here a visual albino, all the babies are going to be 100% heterozygous for albino. So anytime you see someone selling a snake that says it's 100% het, or just says het albino, you know that there's a visual parent. And the way that you can make sure that these babies are 100% het albino is ask to see a picture of the parents. Because most breeders will have pictures of the parents breeding or still have the parents so they can say, hey, this is the mom, this is the dad. Because this is the mom or it was the dad, you know they're 100% het for albino. An albino to an albino what's going to end up happening is you're going to get one so because from here what happened is she sent one copy of the albino gene to each of these babies and this one didn't send a copy because it didn't have it so all of those had one copy what happens when you breed an albino to an albino is these two are both homozygous so there's two copies here there's two copies here and both are going to send a copy to each of the children so we're going to have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're going to have eight babies, and all of them are going to be homozygous because both parents passed on the gene. They had to. They couldn't not pass on the gene. So because of that, you have a full litter of albinos. So you breed an albino to an albino, you get all albinos. There's no het. They are homo. They are carrying two of the same gene, and they will all be visual. Any other gene that is recessive, you breed two of them together, all the babies are going to be visual. Let's say we took two of these babies over here, and they're both 100% het for albino. So they look normal, but they're both carrying albino. Instead of like with the visuals where they always pass on the gene, because they are carrying it, but they're not visually expressing it, they're only going to pass on about half will get one. This one, let's say there's the four babies and the four babies. Now, 
only half of these would be carrying the gene. And only half of these would be carrying the gene. So about 50% of them from each are carrying the gene. So you're going to have 50% that are actually hit. Now about 25% of the babies are going to come out visual. 25% will come out visual. Uh, about that. Because even though about 50% of them got the gene from one and 50% got the gene from the other, we have about 25% where both genes hit. Because there's a 50% chance here and a 50% chance here. And then those two have to go against each other and meet. So you're going to have 25% visual albinos. So let's say out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, that would be 2. Right? Yeah, that would be 2. So you'd have probably about 2 nice little visual albino snakes. So there's about 25% that will be normal. And they'll have missed the gene from this one and they'll have missed the gene from that one. Instead of, because these 50 that got the het albino, they're not 50% het albino. These 50% are carrying albino. And then these 25% are not carrying albino. But out of these, there's a higher percentage of them carrying albino than not. So because there's no way of differentiating visually which ones are carrying albino, instead these babies are labeled as 66% het for albino. So the 25% that are visual, those are albinos, they're sold as albinos, but the 75% that are made up of 50% het albino and 25% normals, we just label them as 66% het. With these 66% het albinos, there's a few of them that are not going to be albino and they're not carrying it. And then there's going to be a decent amount that are carrying it. So now when you breed this, there is a chance that it's not carrying anything. So if you breed it to anything that is an albino, you, you shouldn't really label it as anything more than possible het albino because there is a, a decent chance that it's not carrying anything. But the moment that this 66% het albino is bred to an albino, now we're gonna find out if it's either 100% albino or it's just a normal. And this is called proving a snake out. So we take this 66% het albino, we breed it to an albino. If we get albinos, it's no longer 66% het albino. It becomes 100% het albino. But if it comes out normal, if they're all normal, uh, and you have about a 50% chance here of producing uh, visuals, if it is head albino, so if it isn't head albino, then that 66% becomes a whopping 0%. So it's just a normal then. Let's do that breeding here once again, just to help you understand. Let's say you took because this was a normal to an albino. So now let's say you take one that is 100% het and you take that snake and you breed it to a albino. If you breed a visual to a non-visual, it doesn't matter. They're all going to be carrying the gene. This is passing on one copy of the gene to all of them. And then this one passes on one copy of the gene to about 50% chance. So those 50% will end up being visuals. Then those other 50% will be 100% het. Very nice. Now, if we take this same snake and it's 100% het, and we breed it to a snake that is not, so this is just a normal, 
what we're going to end up getting is all normals and about 50% of them will be carrying albino. So that litter will be sold as 50% het albino. As soon as you start breeding these 50%, 66% into other genes that are not carrying them, that percentage goes down and we just call them possible. But possible really shouldn't affect the price. The 66% heads will probably cost you a little bit more because there's a good chance that they have them. And the 100% heads should be more the most valuable basically of everything that isn't visual. Because when you buy a 100% head, you're not playing any games, you're not guessing. With the 66% chance, you got a pretty good chance of getting it. And if you know what to look for, you might be able to, you know, pick out the brightest snake and take your chances that that one's the albino. But when you come to the 50% head, it's just a matter of fortune. You know, if you're feeling lucky or whatever, maybe it will be, but maybe it won't because you're, you're just taking that chance. Always need two copies of the albino gene to get a visual. If they're not both getting it, there's no way that you're going to have visual albinos. Whew. Most important thing in all this, if there's a visual parent carrying that recessive gene, the babies are all going to have it. So whenever you're getting something and you want to go cheaper and you want to get the ones that are carrying the gene as opposed to paying more for the ones visually showing it, always make sure that one of the parents is a visual albino or a visual animal of the gene that you want.